It's very powerful, but I got to tell you, there's even more powerful material in it. Coincidentally, my wife watched the documentary. We never even discussed it and posted about it because she thought that it was so galling before I even said anything. It's very impactful. Sheryl Sandberg joins us now. Thank you very much for taking the opportunity. Thank you, Chris, for having me and for caring about this issue. Caring about this is so important. I'm so grateful. Well, let's talk about why the concern is a commodity. Um, what does it mean to you that there is a significant appetite for the ability to say, that nah, didn't happen, and if it did, it wasn't what they say, and even if it wasn't what they say, Israel did a lot of it. I find all of that really scary and really unacceptable for the following reasons. This issue is not about what's going on in Gaza. This is not about whether, whatever you believe should happen. You can believe there should be a two-state solution living in peace. That's what I believe. You can believe anything you want to believe. But what you can't believe is that sexual violence, which has been this well documented, didn't happen. And what you really can't believe is that rape is resistance. Rape is never resistance. And I think people are having trouble in this polarized time holding two thoughts at the same time. You can believe that what's happening in Gaza is a tragedy. I believe that very deeply. You can believe that no innocent life should be, should be lost. I believe that very deeply. But you still have to believe that what happened on October 7th was mass systematic planned rape and genital mutilation of women and men that has been documented. But since people don't believe it, I went to Israel and filmed this. And this gives anyone a chance, just watch. If you're not sure, watch with an open, open eye, open heart, open mind, and just listen to what these people will tell you because this is their story. I want to get to another clip, but I want to ask you a context question first. So the immediate thing is the yeah, but. Okay, fine, fine. Sandberg uh, gets it right. I, I believe these people in here. Okay. But what about everything that Israel was doing to them uh, just as bad for so many years, and that's why it happened? How do you deal with that? There's no yeah, but of sexual violence. Think about this historically. For the most of history, we thought that when there's war, women's bodies are part of it. You conquer the village, you get the gold, you rape the women. No. 30 years ago, just 30 years ago, after Bosnia, the DRC, former Yugoslavia, people started prosecuting rape as a war crime, a mm -hmm. crime against humanity. And every feminist group, every progressive group, and conservative group, everyone held this to be true because we all have mothers. We all have sisters. We all have daughters. Rape is never necessary and doesn't need to be part of war. And if in this moment, our polarization is so bad that we backtrack on that. That's unacceptable. And that threatens women all over the world. Chris, right now, as you and I are having this conversation, there are hostages and they are still in Gaza and we know they're being sexually assaulted. We know that because the released hostages have told us that they have spoken to the ones who are still there and they're being sexually assaulted. One of the people who interviewed in this film told us that half, half of the hostages she met when she was in captivity were, had already been sexually assaulted, and that was months ago. We know right now, Ukraine, Sudan, Ethiopia, women are being raped as part of war. We all, no matter what else you think, we stand against this. And stand against this doesn't mean just, oh, it happened. But where's the outrage? Where are the protests? Where's the marching on this? Mm. Especially when it was perpetrated by design by a terror organization, which we saw during 9-11 was like, you know, the one thing that could bring all Americans together, because there was division then also. But then there was a common bad guy, somebody who did something that no one could agree with in the form of what we would then call Al-Qaeda. This time, not happening with Hamas. Nobody's protesting, screaming, bring them back, bring them back. Uh, and it is upsetting, which is, of course, the catalyst for why you wanted to give people more truth. Now, a clip that I'm very interested in, and if I don't have it, I still want you to tell me the story. One of the huge images that wound up being weaponized was there was a woman in some of the raw video that came through early on. We saw it. I think my producer, Jonathan, grabbed it off Telegram when we were in Israel, 
was of a young woman whose pants were all bloodied. Nama, I know exactly what you're talking about, yes. And, oh, okay, they have the clip, great. Let me just show everybody mm -hmm. to remind, to, and I look, I know this isn't easy to watch, but it happened. So you have to deal with the reality because too many people are distorting the reality. So when you actually have it, you've got to watch it. Here it is. Correct. She's barefoot and uh, in her pajamas and they're, they're blood stained. And I think any of, of what, uh, what she experienced, you know, until that point, and how long was she? You know, maybe that's the thing with that video. That we would like to think that this couldn't be possible. That nobody would harm a young girl. But then you, you just see it there. They're the one who, who posted that video, the Hamas. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.